Hey what's up guys, Craftnet here. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at the state of Lee Homebrew in 2021. Launching in November 2006 for 249 US dollars and selling about 101 million units over its lifespan, it's safe to say it was a very successful console. With an IBM PowerPC CPU at 729 MHz and an ATI GPU running at 343 MHz, it's safe to say the Wii wasn't very powerful for its generation. However, this didn't stop homebrew developers as it was the most easily exploited console of its generation. With an SD card and about 10 to 20 minutes of free time, you can soft mod a Wii. If you haven't already, the resources to do so are linked in the description below. Ah, the Homebrew Channel. Gateway to all things homebrew, and arguably one of the most iconic channels despite being unofficial. I'll be covering utilities and emulators. If you want to skip to a specific part, the video has chapters you can skip between. Starting off with emulators. NES runs perfectly in all games using the FCE UGX emulator. With it, you can play classics such as Super Mario Bros., Kirby's Adventure, Tetris, and many more. It even has an installable channel, so you can launch it directly from the Wii home screen. Moving over to SNES 9X GX, typical SNES games such as Super Mario All-Stars, Super Mario World, and Super Mario Kart run perfectly. And you can even run some Super FX games such as Doom, Star Fox, and Stunt Race FX pretty well too. This emulator has an installable channel as well. Going over to VBA GX, both Game Boy and Game Boy Color run perfectly, which is to be expected. Emulating these systems is pretty easy. Game Boy Advance runs pretty well, though there are a few audio and frame skips in sometimes. And like the last two, this also has an installable channel. Moving over to Sega Genesis using the Genesis GX emulator. Games seem to run fine, however my testing was less in depth because I am pretty unfamiliar with the Genesis so don't take this as seriously as the others. It also can run other consoles such as the Sega CD, but I didn't test these due to unfamiliarity with Sega's hardware. Heading over to the Nintendo 64 using Not64. The situation is a bit more complex. Super Mario 64 runs pretty well. Mario Kart 64 runs pretty great too, but there's also some weird pitch shifting with that game in the audio. And it seems to happen more frequently in heavier N64 games that are harder to emulate. And I tested Glover 2. It started up, but the textures occasionally glitched, and the skybox didn't load properly in the levels I tested, instead showing a black abyss. Though the game is overall playable. That's pretty much all when it comes to emulation. Now moving over to utilities. Starting off with Clean Rip, you can use this to rip GameCube and Wii discs to ISOs for use in Dolphin or as a digital backup. And once you have those backups, you can use WeFlow to load them off of a USB driver SD card if you want to avoid using discs altogether. However, load times will be slower than if you just ran the game off the disc. WeFlow also supports loading GameCube games if you have Nintendo set up. Speaking of Nintendo, you can use it to run GameCube games on an unsupported Wii or Wii U Virtual Wii and play using the classic controller instead of a GameCube controller if you prefer. Moving over to FTP, you can use FTP to easily transfer homebrew and other files onto your Wii over the network. You'll need a compatible FTP software on your PC too. I recommend WinSCP, but you can use whatever you want. Moving over to the Open Shop channel, it is a modification of the homebrew browser to have a more updated database, and using it you can easily find homebrew and download it directly from your Wii and they have a PC app available too if you'd rather use that. That pretty much about wraps up everything I wanted to cover. There's many more homebrew apps, and if you guys want to check out any other ones, I'll leave links to check out in the description. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you like the content, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, or leave criticism of how I could do better in the future if you didn't. I've been Craftnet, and I'll see you in the next video.